Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Cloud Architects Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Goosen, and I'm joined as always by Mr. Nicholas Blank. Hi, Chris. It's fun to do this again, and I say that not facetiously, facetiously. It's a big word on day three, three four, <laughs> something like that. The it's a little bit by. like Ignite, right? Where the, when uh, we recorded like 12 episodes or 16 episodes, I forget, and then we, after day four, we were exhausted because yeah. we spent so much time recording. And talking. And talking. Right. However, we are here at MVP Summit and we are talking to amazing people, including the two amazing people that we'll talk to today. And I'll ask them to introduce themselves in a second. But for now, I'll say today we are talking to Katie and Pablo of the Customer Connection Program, very specifically the Security Customer Connection Program. And uh, let's start with you, Katie. Do you want to introduce yourself and tell our listeners what you do? Sure. So my name is Katie Rickman, and as was mentioned, I am a part of the Security Customer Connection Program as one of the leads there at Microsoft. Uh, what I do, let's see, in my spare time, I love to play flag football, take long walks on the beach. Uh, but in my professional life, <laughs> it's really all about community and how we're connecting our users of, the, uh, of our products into our engineering team so that we can learn from their experiences and their recommendations to build better products. That's amazing. I was about to make a pina colada in the rain joke, but then I didn't. So I think that was rather <laughs> adult of me today on day four. <laughs> I do also like pina coladas. Look at that. <laughs> good good accent. Good accent. <laughs> right. yeah. Pablo, do you want to introduce yourself to our listeners? Of course. My name is Pablo Chacon. Along with Katie, I'm part of the Security Customer Connection Program, our security community. Mm. And... I'm originally from Ecuador. I've been living here in Seattle for 20 years, and I love skiing during winter here. Uh, and we are blessed because we have so many ski resorts very nearby. And then the rest of the time is, uh, along with Katie, working with our customers and our partners, trying to gather input for our security products. And I'm sure that we will talk more about that today. So I want to talk uh, a little bit about what I love about this program because I'm a participant in the security CCP. And what's nice is that because I'm an MVP, I know things that don't exist. However, what does the normal customer do when they want to know what's on the roadmap and what's coming? And that's when they want to connect to one of the CCPs. And this happens to be the security CCP. And Chris, I didn't know... And I'm not sure if you did, that there are actually multiple CCPs. I didn't, no. I mean, I'm learning a whole lot about, I didn't really know a whole lot about CCP mm -hmm. until yesterday uh, also. And so I think that's why it's uh, super valuable for us to have, you know, folks like yourselves, Katie and Pablo, to be able to educate the listeners and, and, and their organizations, right? And, and I guess it's a two-way street, isn't it? It's not just about what we can get from Microsoft, but what Microsoft can, you know, get benefit from uh, our community and our, our, our customers. And it sounds like election season coming up. Ah, well, yeah. <laughs> we, won't, we won't go down that road. Although I have to say, you're right. It's not just about what we can get. And what we can get as customers is actually very cool because we get to see stuff before it exists and we get to play with the toys before they hit the mainstream. Mm. And we get to affect the direction of the products, which mm. for all of us mm. is, a, is a huge thing. So we get away from the frustration of it turned up in my tenant to I influence the security and the, I influence the direction of the security product that's now appeared in my tenant. And may I say something about what you just said? I love that you, you, you said that because that is what we want our community to do. Mm. We want our community to share their input to influence the decisions that we make for our products and obviously make them better for everybody. But I love the fact that you mentioned that there is also value to you mm -hmm. because that is our intention. Katie and I, we are here to be advocates both for Microsoft, but also very important for our customers, our partners and MVPs. Mm. So I love that you said that. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, the, the whole idea is, is help us mm. help you, right. yeah. really, to help you secure your organizations, mm. your customers by helping to make our security products better mm. for you mm. in the end. Yeah. yeah, and I think we've we've come a long way from the days where we only interact with Microsoft when we have something to complain about, right? Yep. You know, and, 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 and I think that's where it becomes really important when you have this sort of two-way learning street. We can talk to each other, uh, have conversations about things that are important to us, uh, have understand what's important to Microsoft and see where those things meet, mm. right? Mm. Mm. I think that's very valid. Mm. And 
we have this paradigm of being able to go to MVP Summit once a year and mm. learn about the things that are coming out. But to be fair, that's once a year, right? Mm. And then we've got some regular calls and, and things. But can I ask you just to talk through the, the, the rhythm of the CCP and what you do with customers and how exciting it actually is in terms of what customers are exposed to? And of course, what you, what you ask of them. Yeah, so um, for us, we really have kind of four formal types of engagements that we run within our communities. Uh, so we have surveys that could be like research surveys. So even before we get to development, maybe we're still in planning, still trying to understand our users' experiences and what we should go develop next. We'll send out surveys. Those come out a fair amount. You'll see several a week, depending on the different products. Um, then once we've started to gather some of that research through those surveys and really any number of signals that we're getting coming in, but through CCP surveys is a good way, as well as the, the Teams chat that we have too, where folks can just openly share their feedback on anything at any time. Uh, second kind of formal type of engagement is our private previews. So that's where, yes, we've gone into development. Uh, we're giving you hands-on access to the bits and bytes and you can go play with it. Go try and break it, test it out, see how it works, and then come back to us and say, does it work? Does it not? Here's what I like. Here's what I don't like. Here's what I recommend to update um, so that we can make those enhancements before we go to public preview in GA. Uh, we also have community calls is kind of the third type of engagement. Um, so that could be anywhere from half an hour to an hour. We run those several times a week, again, depending on the product, depending on the uh, CCP. Um, and that could be a private preview deep dive where we're going really deep into all the information about the private preview, or it could be a roadmap call, which is what we do every so often where we'll talk about what's coming in the next six to 12 months mm -hmm. and kind of open the kimono, share it with you, let you know what's gonna be happening. And then let we're looking for you guys to help tell us, are we on the right path? Mm -hmm. Like, are we prioritizing things properly? Is there something that we've missed that should be on the roadmap because it is a high business priority for you mm -hmm. and we need to work that into our roadmap for the next semester um, of development? Uh, the fourth type of engagement is focus groups. So focus groups are more going to be like deep dive conversations, small group style. Uh, maybe it's a challenge that we've seen our customers are having and we want to understand that challenge better and talk through some potential solutions. Or maybe we have a potential solution to something and we want to talk through, you know, just validate our assumptions and see if that's the right solution for the challenge that we think we're addressing. Um, that kind of thing. So those are kind of our, our four main types of formal engagements. But then we also just have the informal mm -hmm. connections as well. So our Teams platform is open for constant discussion and conversation with our engineering teams. So within that community, you have that direct connection mm -hmm. to our our product group to our engineering teams, um, as well as peer-to-peer -peer conversation. So understanding best practices, sharing best practices. Um, so yeah, Pablo, anything you'd want to add to that? I, I just want to highlight the peer-to-peer the -peer conversations because it's something that um, it has been growing through time and we love to see how community members are, are now helping community members, right? It's not only Microsoft running the community, it's the community running the community. and. Uh, something else that I wanted to add, uh, we have a large number of uh, opportunities to, to share feedback with us, and sometimes even during one week. But this is not a community where you will be pressured to, to participate. Mm -hmm. uh, but members can participate as much as they can, and we know that mm -hmm. the first priority for our members is to secure their organizations, mm -hmm. their customers, right? And we recognize that. So it's not a community where you are going to be uh, pushed or pressured mm -hmm. to always participate, but it's whenever you can. And um, when you can, obviously, we want to hear everything, as Katie said. Mm -hmm. this uh, What we offer to the community is opportunity to validate our mm -hmm. plans and our new mm -hmm. capabilities. And the mission is to break them because we want those to be broken and, and fixed before mm. we, we open the new capability to the general public. So mm. this is the value of the community. It really help us validate um, not only that we are on the right track and that we are addressing the most important scenarios for our customers and partners and MVPs, but that we also 
uh, offer a quality product thanks to this community. Mm. Mm. I'm, I was going to say, I'm reminded of what used to be called the uh, the TAP or the Technical yes. Adoption Program yeah. uh, back in the in the days of on-premises software, right? It's true. Uh, with maybe with a modern spin to it, which is which is mm. kind of cool. Um, mm -hmm. What's nice though. Because we've got this security umbrella, it's not just one product. Right. And uh, my follow-up question to you is, do you want to tell us what's actually in the box? What products or what product families mm -hmm. are we even talking to? Absolutely. Um, when talking about the security CCP, one of our CCPs, we cover all the security products in the Microsoft platform. So we are talking about Microsoft 365 security products, Microsoft uh, Defender XDR. We are talking about Microsoft Sentinel in, in the role of the SIEM. We are talking about cloud security with Microsoft Defender for Cloud and all the different plans that, that Defender for Cloud offers. We're talking about Azure security. We're talking about um, confidential security. Mm -hmm. So if Network there security is- security as well. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. if, if there is a security offering within Microsoft, we can help our community funnel their feedback to the right product groups. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yeah, we, we cover everything in Microsoft. And for us, obviously, security customer connection program is kind of where our heads are at. But mm -hmm. there are other customer connection programs as well. Mm -hmm. So we have one that's our Entra Advisors is the Entra Customer Connection Program. Then we have our Modern Management Customer Connection Program that covers um, our Windows Intune. products and Intune. Uh, Windows, Microsoft Intune, and System Center Manager. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Data I Security and Protection, yes. our newest CCP. Yeah, so that covers our... Data security and protections, like Purview, would be mm -hmm. one of the products in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the intra calls. I found um, so a couple of of months back, we started having questions about, you know, what's on the roadmap and what's happening to MIS. You know, for the the artist formerly known as now known as MIM, mm -hmm. and uh, what are we doing with identity and synchronization? And all of a sudden, we were sitting looking at slides. Mm. that we could share with our customers around mm. roadmap items, things that weren't on the website. Yes. Now, this, I mean, this sort of sneak peek or peek, you know, opening up the Komodo, this sounds great. What, I mean, what are the requirements from a, from a customer mm. uh, or organizational perspective to join this, right? This isn't something that, you know, you exclusively have to be an MVP with an NDA in, in place. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what it takes or what is required? So you got 50% of that correct. Okay. You don't okay. have to be an MVP, but right. you do have to have an NDA okay. in place. Okay. And that is really our number one requirement okay. um, is you have to have a non-disclosure agreement signed with Microsoft. Okay. Um, so typically that's going to be an organizational NDA. Uh, uh, so you sign up to our sign up form, which is aka.mswacjoinccp. Again, that is aka.mswacjoinccp. Um, and that gives you access to joining any of the CCPs that we have available, including the security CCP. So please join that one first. Um, and with that, you'll sign up with your organization. We will check for you if you have an NDA with Microsoft. If not, we'll let you know and we can also help you acquire that. Um, for MB MVPs, you're a little special. You have your own personal NDA with Microsoft. So you can sign up with your MVP uh, identity. And if you buy now, <laughs> wait. But wait, there's, there's more. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, the, the yeah. NDA is the biggest thing, but really yeah. we're looking for folks that obviously not only just have the NDA, yeah. but are users of the products and yes. are able to give us, you know, valuable feedback mm. on what we can be doing better. Mm. And so if you are open to articulating that feedback and sharing that with us, mm. we, all, we are all ears. Yeah. And I can really, I can see a lot of value here for folks who, especially people who are doing uh, custom things in their tenant, right? People, folks who are who are um, sort of not just using a uh, out of the box flavor of something, mm -hmm. but maybe are extending it for their own internal use or or things like that. This it's really great to have that roadmap and understand, you know, how the integrations might be working or what's coming down the pipe that may add more benefit or, or, or whatnot. So, I mean, I can see a lot of value there for Microsoft partners, especially in, in uh, organizations oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I think the kind of customers that you and I have where mm. there's some level of complexity mm. or uh, they've had things for a while and what's going to happen with the 
or whatever in search yeah. topic here yep. that is invaluable and uh, I just want to re-emphasize the value that I have gained out of this program even mm -hmm. though mm -hmm. I'm s privy to the product group calls mm -hmm. there's things that happen in the community as Pablo said mm -hmm. that don't happen mm -hmm. on a one-sided one-to-many type of a call right mm -hmm. yeah can I ask you to talk about successes that you've had with customers and the benefits that customers have gained outside of just knowledge? Absolutely. Um, let's start with the benefits. And this is actually information that uh, our members share with us. Uh, perhaps one of the biggest benefits is, obviously, the opportunity of influence in the future of our products. Mm -hmm. But for customers, for partners, the opportunity of knowing ahead of time what we are planning to offer to our customers um, is an advantage. And for customers, as a customer, you have better opportunity to plan your security um, projects within your company. Knowing where Microsoft is going ahead mm -hmm. of time, it positions you to do that in a more efficient way, mm -hmm. right? Uh, obviously for partners, uh, partners have the opportunity to uh, think on how to offer new capabilities uh, that Microsoft offers to your customers, right? And many times to build solutions on top of that, which we love. We love our our uh, partners building solutions and, and offerings using our products. Uh, for MVPs, MVPs are, you are a special community because your passion is about your own communities. Mm. Is Your passion is about uh, amplifying technical knowledge and awareness. And so the benefit that many of you have told us is that we arm you to do that, to enable your passion and to empower your own communities to, to do more with our products once they are announced. So that is perhaps one of the biggest values from the community. Um, I cannot mention customers because obviously uh, membership is confidential and it's part of the NDA that, that we offer. But uh, definitely I can, we can think of several companies that after having participated of our, in our private communities, they implemented solutions earlier. Mm -hmm. Typically that is one of the biggest benefits. Uh, customers and, and partners have the opportunity to um, drive their implementations almost right after they are released. M multiple times, mm. they start their implementations during the private preview phase. Mm. And then by the time that the, the, the new experience, the new feature is released to the public, they are already on that, uh, uh, gaining the benefits of the new capability. Mm -hmm. um, so both from a, a strategic and planning and technology uh, perspectives, there are multiple benefits. And that is only what some members have told us. I'm pretty sure that there are other examples of different benefits that members gain from us. And, and if you are a member and you are looking at this, uh, at this podcast, please let us know. We want to hear your success stories, right? Mm -hmm. um, as I said before, we are here to be advocates, not only for Microsoft, but also for our community members. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's nothing more rewarding when you see a happy customer mm -hmm. or a happy partner. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is basically what energizes us, the, the ability to empower our community to do better. Mm. So customer joins the program, checks the box and says, oh, there's this thing I'd like to play with. I want to kick the tires. Mm -hmm. And then... How much money do they give you, Pablo? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Participation is zero cost. Uh, most of our features uh, don't have a cost during the private preview phase. So customers can easily test new capabilities knowing that they are not going to be built for something. And obviously, later, uh, depending on the benefits, different customers and partners can make the decisions of how or when to implement the new capability. But participation in the community uh, doesn't have a cost. There is an investment on time. Mm -hmm. And different people invest a different amount of times. We have members that really, really are involved on so many opportunities that sometimes <laughs> make us think, wow, they are so active and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And obviously we have members that participate when they can, right? But all in all is the, the value uh, that, that everybody has. It's really what you may want it to be, mm. right? Uh, knowing that the most important thing, your voice is being heard by us, by our product groups. 
That's one of the, uh, the, the the cooler things for me, and I want to make sure that that was understood, is you sign up for a program and that licenses appear in your tenant as if by magic. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, but I think it's, um, it, we work with complex customers, right? And so sometimes what may appear to, you know, to other customers as a very simple feature set or capability in certain environments, if you look at protected environments or regulated environments, it's not always that simple, right? And there's, it takes a lot, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to actually be able to deploy a capability like that. And so I can really see, you know, the, the value of being able to have a preview of that a little ahead of time so that you can prepare, but then also feedback to say, hey there product group, did you consider the fact that, you know, uh, in, a, in a protected environment, we can't just do this thing. Mm -hmm. We have these constraints around it, right? Um, and it's two-way street. I think yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, you want to know. I said anything else you want to know. <laughs> well, I mean, I think there's a there's a lot to consider there, but I, I, that is, um, yeah, fa fantastic benefit. I, it's been a great learning for me. I think this is one of the big takeaways from from Summit for me this year is 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 this because I think you know I often just wear my MVP hat, um, which is great, but but sometimes you know I have to wear my my partner hat as well, right? That's right. I have to my big boy pants and my partner hat. Um, and this is, I think this is a, a really, really valuable tool for me when I'm when I'm sort of in that persona. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. and okay. A great thing about the community too is oftentimes we have, you know, our, our bigger customers, our bigger partners that have the louder voices, the louder connection into some of our, you know, product groups. And so oftentimes there's this feeling that the products might be skewed toward those larger enterprises. Right. Whereas this community, um, really it was only a couple of years ago or so that we said, hey, we want all voices in here. We really yeah. want to get the diversity yeah. of voice, the diversity of perspectives. All shapes and sizes. Right, yeah. exactly. Right. So that's why it's, you know, the NDA is really the only thing, the only bar to entry or barrier right. to entry. Um, but we have everyone from small, medium-sized businesses up to the larger enterprises and part partners themselves, as well as rep, uh, representing customers of all sizes that are in there. So we we definitely want mm. all sizes in there too. Mm. So mid-market, smaller customers, your voice is just as loud in this community as those enterprise customers, mm. which is something we didn't really have before. Yes. So just wanted to mention that. that no, that's fantastic. And, um, and if I may add, uh, and that is really extremely important for us to have a diverse community, but diversity means different things, right? Yeah. And um, the way how we look at diversity in this community is diversity of ideas and yeah. diversity of cultures, diversity of challenges, right. diversity of requirements. And so, as Katie was mentioning, by us opening this community to anyone who wants to participate and, yeah. and is willing to sign a non-disclosure agreement with Microsoft, your voice is going to be heard because we want that diversity. That is one of the most important things that we look into this community. That's that's yeah. amazing. So before we let you go, um, I know you, you've already given us the, the URL, but I don't know if you want to just one more time, just in case. <laughs> A.K.A. dot M.S. WAC join CCP. A.K.A. Dot MS, WEC, join CCP. I feel like I should say it again and louder for the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any other sort of resources or, or links or anything like that that you'd like to kind of share while you have the opportunity now? Um, or, you know, we'll make sure to put that one in the in the show notes uh, a couple times so that Including folks can find LinkedIn, it. LinkedIn, URLs. Security community. Exactly. So we have been talking about the private communities, yeah. right? The CCP program. Mm. But our organization also runs public communities. And this is something that anybody can participate of. There is no needed registration. Mm -hmm. You just go to our website. If you want to attend uh, public webinars, you can. Mm. And obviously, the webinars are focused on talking and diving into the new capabilities of our, of our products. So if you want to know more of our, about our public community and everything they have to offer, the link is aka.ms.wac.security.community. 
Okay. That is AKA WAC, uh, AKA that MS WAC Security Community. Perfect. So, really, for folks who maybe can't, for whatever reason, sign an NDA, or maybe they mm -hmm. they don't have a th uh, authorization from their organization or what have you to do that, mm -hmm. this is a great, another great resource where they can still sort of see what's coming up and and, and things like that Absolutely. at a slightly limited more limited capacity. That's awesome. There's more in the box than we thought. <laughs> There's <laughs> more in the box than we thought. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll be sure to share those. And um, how about uh, sort of uh, social handles or anything like that. Um, you know, are you guys happy to be found on social media, LinkedIn's, and so forth? Or I am anti-social. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you will you will find me out there, but they're all old. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am terrible with that. Fair enough. And what I can offer is my LinkedIn. There you go. Uh, so you can find me on LinkedIn, you know, Pablo Chacon under Microsoft. I think that my alias is PJ. Chacon, P J C H A C O N, mm -hmm. but I don't remember. We will, look at, we will look it up and, and we will put it thank in there. You. And mine is just Katie Rickman, K A T I E R Y C K M A N for LinkedIn, but again, it's old. Right. <laughs> so don't be offended if you don't get that follow request approved right away because <laughs> you know it may take a week or two <laughs> before you check it. <laughs> Although, what might help if we include in the show notes, if you don't, both just want to share your home addresses, credit card details. <laughs> because it's so secure. <laughs> 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 no, that's that, that that's fantastic. That's kind of how I am with Facebook Messenger. I get people. I don't. I never. Ch I never check Facebook Messenger, right? So then I get I people. Know. I message you where on Facebook. Ah, oh, uh, no, no, that's never going to work. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I think this has been a great show. I think so. This is super interesting stuff. And it's one of those things where we didn't know that it existed, and then we we thought, oh, this is pretty cool. Let's talk about that. But there was a lot more in the box than we thought of. Yeah. 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 And Really fun people to talk to. It's always it's always great. We love these in these in person recordings, right? It's kind of been our, our theme for the week is is catching up with people and connecting with people yep. again in person. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this has been really fun. So thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate you guys yeah. coming on. Thanks so yeah. much for having us on the show. This was great. I'm glad that we met. I'm glad we were able to do this and yeah, especially in person because that doesn't happen so much anymore. Yeah. Oh, it, this yeah. is great. Thank you for the invitation to participate and. As Katie said, this is great because we get to see the faces behind the handles. Right. And we love right. to do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Before we let them go, see what I did there, pregnant pause. So <laughs> both, both Pablo and I go. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming our way. <laughs> so Ignite was announced. Mm -hmm. And there will be some representation of some things at Ignite. So we hear. So, and that's, we, we've heard things. What can we tell our customers today about what may or may not be happening? Vague details are great. So the fact that we know that's five days in Chicago and bring your winter woolies, that's all we know right now. Is there anything we can share before we let you go and then promise we will let you go after that unless we think of something else? I don't have an insight on the agenda for Ignite. And, and that is... Mm. Totally honest, mm. yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But you, you know what you can do? You can join the private exactly. community and then see what we can share ahead of Ignite through the mm. private community. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> we know nothing about Ignite. <laughs> 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 and as we continue learning nothing, we will let you know what we have learned. <laughs> Good yes. poker face. Good poker face. <laughs> Thank you both so much again for making the time. We appreciate you coming on the show. Thank awesome. you. Thanks, Thank guys. you.